All right, Anik, start us off, please. Archie, nice to meet you, my guy. Nice Where to meet you. Know, you're six and oh, you're six and oh in Bellator. You've competed for Khabib's Eagle FC. What type of full circle moment would it be to win this fight, win a couple more, to really fight on Khabib's promotion, and then fight his cousin Usman for the title one day? Uh, yeah, you know he's he's the champion in the way, in the weight class, so it would be nice to. Uh, it would be cool storyline to say, you know, I've gone full circle from fighting for Khabib's Eagle FC and came back around and, uh, you know, tried to go out there and, and defeat his cousin for the belt uh, in Bellator. So that would be great. To It would be a great storyline, and it would be, uh, you know, cool, cool to uh, conquer. Awesome. And one more for me. You spend a lot of time training with the Usman brothers and Justin Gaethje, and that's helped you make you so good, right? You yeah. Tell me the funny story with them. I got to tell you what? The funniest story with them. Oh, man, there's long list, man. It's uh, it's always fun. Uh, everyone's a little bit different, you know. Uh, Justin's actually out here for the fight, and, you know, the list is long of funny stories that, that goes with him. Um, off the top of my head, I don't, I don't know what I can just think of, but there's, there's a lot. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Tristan. Archie, how you doing? Good. How are you? Tristan, you still with us? We're going to circle back to you. Steve. Uh, T, good to speak to you today. Um, obviously, your opponent, T. Valjuzzi, he's a guy with a lot more experience than yourself. How do you compare him to some of the last guys you fought with more experience than yourself, Emmanuel Sanchez, Peter Bounce? Uh, yeah, he's right in the, in that same, you know, category list of those guys. Uh, Sanchez had, you know, 29 fights and, and Buist had, I don't know exactly how many fights he had, but he was like 17 and eight. Um, and he's, his record is similar to that. So he's, uh, in that same category as these guys, a well-seasoned veteran, good fighter, been all over the place. Um, yeah, he's, uh, maybe a little bit more dangerous because he's coming off a knockout win. So. Obviously, you're nine and zero. Do you feel any extra pressure to get the job done the longer you remain undefeated? No, the 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 my my tie is not to an undefeated record. I'm not I'm not holding on to that. It's I just don't want to lose. And with not wanting to lose and wanting to be the best, you tend not to lose. So yeah, it's not it's not the undefeated record that I'm holding on to. I just want to be great. And obviously, t is going to be the hometown favorite in this fight. And the Paris crowd, unknown to be pretty rowdy. Is that something you've been able to prepare for? And what are your thoughts on what you've seen from the French crowd before in general? Yeah, they, they look to be, um, yeah, hometown favorite guys. They're definitely going to cheer for him. Maybe they'll boo me. Maybe they're not. I don't know. But I know for sure that they're going to be cheering for him and rooting for him. I'm excited for that. Um, yeah, I look forward to that energy that they're going to bring to the fight All right, thank you best of luck yes sir thank you patrick what's up archie hope you're feeling good so you and your wife recently got baptized and became part of the catholic church what went into that decision and do you feel like it changed you for the better uh we, thank you we actually got baptized into like a non-dominational christian church but um yeah it's a, uh, it's a uh, great you know uh Faith and religion has always been a thing in my life, but it's it's really gotten big since I've had my two boys and I brought them into this world. So I, I really wanted to circle back to my foundation and religion and faith and uh, become more strong with it uh, so I can raise my boys to be good, God-fearing men. Happy to hear. So you fought a guy from the Netherlands last time out. Now you're taking on a guy from France. Are you just trying to add a name on your resume to fighters from every country in Europe, or is it just a coincidence? You know, they, these guys just offer me fights, and I just say yes. I'm, uh, it, before it was Go- Goody, it was uh, an Irish dude who said yes, and, uh, you know, that's just what it was. So I don't, I don't really control all of that, but, you know, whoever is saying yes to that fight, let's do it. 
Have you practiced your backflip at all since Justin Gaethje kind of showed you up last time you tried it? <laughs> I need some practice on that. No, I got, I almost had to pull out of a fight because of that, man. I got hurt. No, I didn't actually get hurt on that, but I I need to practice that outside of camp because <laughs> I got some making up to do for sure before I go hit a black a backflip off the wall. Enjoy your time in Paris. Sorry. Thanks, bro. Mike. Actually, I'm kind of cheating since we just spoke, but uh, I, I got to ask, um, obviously, big opportunity here. And one thing you said to me was that, you know, you want that Bellator title specifically. Can you just kind of elaborate on that? Uh, yeah, it's just a, it's a prestigious, uh, you know, position to be in, to say that you're a champion of Bellator. Um, it's unlike any other, you know, there's only a couple or other organizations that are as known as it uh, in mixed martial arts. So to say that you held that belt, especially because we all know that in the coming years, that's not going to be a thing. Uh, it's eventually going to dissolve all into PFL. So to say that I was champion of this organization, I have that belt at my house that nobody else can obtain because it's gone now. That sounds, uh, that sounds good to me. And there's always going to be the narrative when you're facing a guy who's a veteran with more fights than you. But given your training partners, given your team, given the, the guys you work with, not everyone gets the opportunity to work with the likes of Kamaru Usman and Justin Gaethje and have them. So what does that, having that camaraderie, those training sessions, what has that done for you in your career despite not having as many fights as your previous opponents? Yeah, uh, I mean, obviously, if I wasn't prepared or ready for these Opponents, I wouldn't be matched and tasked with them. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm completely prepared and ready for these guys. Partially because of those training partners that you had talked about. You know, I train with them all the time since I was. I mean, I've been training with Gaethje since I made my amateur debut, and then Kamaro since I was like one and zero as a pro. So, you know, I grew up under these guys. Um, and you, uh, when you when you're around guys like that, and you train with guys like that, you kind of have to learn on the job. So, uh, you know, sometimes it wasn't always in my favor, but um, it's put me in a position like this, and this is definitely in my favor. How quickly are you gonna indulge in French food when uh, you get the fight over with? Uh, yeah, you know, I've been looking at these croissants everywhere I go, and these baguettes, these people just walk, it's, it's like, a baguette's like an accessory out here, you know, these guys just walk around the street with the baguette that, like, almost matches their outfit, like, this is the baguette for the day or something, I don't know, I'm looking forward to it, I love pastries and, 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 uh, you know, bakery dishes and stuff, so, uh, yeah, I'm gonna definitely grab me some of that and hopefully go grab some, some nice food. All right, well, while France and Paris is enjoying their baguettes, why don't you go get the bag, Archie? Thank you. All right, thanks, man. Mills. What's going on, Archie? It's MMA Locker Room, part of Pop Sports Radio. How you feeling? I'm good, bro. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Fresh shirt, so I got to ask. Appreciate you got the it. shoes on the match? Nah, nothing crazy. I mean, I got some nice... I can't pull them up on the screen here. I'm not that flexible, can I? I got some nice Adidas. Just some plain whites, you know? Nothing crazy. Got you, got you, man. All right, so we can about something crazy. I mean, you're in Paris. I mean, they got some crazy walkouts, crazy celebrations. Last time you won at Bellator 293, I was at the event, part of the media. You jumped on the cage and did yeah. the Triple H celebration. Yeah. You got anything uh, in store for us this week? Well, let's just say, go out there and go get that finish again. I'll be up on that cage. You might see Triple H again. We'll see. Got it, got it. And then, I mean, you started off, you know, first three wins in Bellator, finishing all your opponents. Last two wins, you know, you were able to go to the decision. Uh, some people, you know, still don't know the name Archie Colgan when we talk about him, you know. How can we get the name out there a little bit more? I know you got one of the best managers in the company with Ali Alabdiz, but w w what's next for us? How can we get this name out there? You know, I, I just got to get back to my ways of... of, of uh... You know, yeah, like you said, these last two fights have been, you know, wins. I haven't lost a round. Um, so in my pro career so far, nine fights, I haven't lost a single round. Um, but finishes draw people in more. And uh, I just need to get back to that. You know, not, not at all forced, not trying to, you know, put myself in any bad positions to get there. But, yeah, I need to go out there and, and make statements and 
uh, you know, make highlights and, and people will start to watch more, tune in more. Got it. I mean, you know, it seems like the attention kind of gets thrown around if you're, you know, kind of disrespectful and a trash talker and all that. You're not none of that type of fighter at all. You kind of let your fighting go out there and talk for you. But let's just set up a path. Once you get past this fight, uh, this Friday, is there any names that you just got on your radar? Just just give me two names. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, it's going to take some time to get there. But, yeah, the belt holder... It's gonna. That's gonna. Obviously, the championship was supposed to be on this card between him and Shabli, and that'll change. So I don't know exact names on this, but in the next fight or two, um, yeah, I, I put myself right there into uh, you know a number one contender position, and you know whoever that may be, you know we'll take care of that business. All right, man. Good luck. Can't wait to see you fight this week. Yep. Thanks, bro. Dylan. International Archie, what's up, man? What up, bro? Uh, last fight, we saw world-class MMA wrestling coach Ben Sherrington join Peter Straub and Justin Salas in your corner. What's it like to have his presence with you there on fight week, and can we expect him to be a mainstay in your corner going forward? Um, yeah, it's been great. He, uh, you know, Ben and Justin uh, couldn't make it out until a little bit later, so, uh, sorry, Peter and Justin couldn't. And Ben came out with me, uh, we left last Tuesday, so a week ago we left, got out here, and, uh, you know, it's shout out him for leaving his family for 10 days as well as, as me, um, and just, you know, being a team player. Uh, yeah, he's going to be a staple in, in my career as, as long as he wants to be around uh, the MMA community and, and help out with the wrestling. Definitely. Have you found out that the promotion told you if you're going to be the featured prelim, or are you going to open the main card for this one? Um, they haven't told me for sure. Online, it looks like it's a it's a main card fight. Um, and from some things that I've been tagged in and stuff, but yeah, I don't I don't know a hundred percent because nobody's told me no. Mm-hmm. Regardless of that, it seems like you get matched up with tougher and tougher guys with each fight that passes. Now you're set to take on a six fight UFC veteran, either on the main card or in the featured prelim of a Bellator Champion Series event. How do you feel about the opportunities you've earned thus far in your Bellator tenure? And what can you tell me about Ali and Mike Hogan and how they've helped guide the pace of your career thus far? Um, yeah, so I feel really good, positive about you know my development and how I've been coming along. Um, yeah, he's a tough fighter. I would put him in the same caliber as these last two opponents that I've had. Real good veteran. Um, but I would say he's probably a little bit more dangerous, especially in the position. He's coming off a, a, a KO win. Um, but that's good. I'm excited for that. Um, another task at hand that I have to go out there and, and prove that I am that guy that I believe and that Ali and Mike Kogan believe that I am to be. Um, they've done a really good job of, of continuing to put people who should be in a position to push me in front of me. Um, and I've done a good job of proving that they are not. Appreciate it, Archie. Good luck, man. Appreciate you, bro. Fight Me Media. Hey, Archie, nice to meet you. Daniel from Fight Me Media Temple in Switzerland. So, as a former wrestler, I have to ask the question. Are you going to use the wrestling skills that you learn in your camps as a weapon to ruin the French party or not? That you, He is definitely better be prepared to do some wrestling, yes. So, it's not something that you are going to bet on you are going to more be like uh like uh choose more striking than rushing with the bet off uh well, no, i mean it's an mma fight you know we're, we're gonna do it all we're gonna wrestle we're gonna strike we're gonna grapple all of it so a balanced fight yeah a what a balanced fight yeah yeah exactly a bit of a and what are your goal on the long and short term on your mma career after this fight bro I want to be, I would like to fight two more times this year if I can. That's definitely pushing it because, you know, we're already in uh, May, the fifth month, and there's only 12. So I would definitely have to be pretty active going in after this. But if I could, I'd like to fight in September in San Diego. And uh, I heard there's something going on uh, New Year's Day. So I would like to fight on that one as well. Okay, bro. Thank you. Best of luck. Thanks, bro. All right, Carlito, last question. Yes, Carlito Fight Talk here. How are you doing, Archie? I'm good, and, bro. Um, 
How was the uh, training camp? You know, break down training camp for us. Yeah, it was good. Um, I had uh, probably like 12 weeks notice of this fight. And then, you know, we used that first four weeks to really adjust and uh, put together the style of training camp that we want. And then we ran hard for eight weeks straight and right into fight week and uh, flew out here a little bit early. And uh, it's been great. I've had, for the most of my camp, I was in training camp as well with other teammates. Um, They're preparing for their fights. So it was nice to have other people to push with. Uh, and then we came out here, and, and now it's my turn to get my job done. Facts, facts. So, 9 and 0, what can we all expect under the lights in Paris Friday? Uh, a calm, composed, explosive, dangerous athlete. Excellent, excellent. I look forward to seeing you. Thank you, bro. Thank you.